This is the voice of the Report of the Week, signing on. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone listening. This is VOYW, the voice of the Report of the Week, and we're broadcasting now via YouTube. This is the international service of VOYW, the voice of the Report of the Week, available around the world, wherever an internet connection does exist. Thank you for listening. This is, again, the official broadcast of the Report of the Week's channel where you can find an official source for any channel news which interests you, any personal dialogue. Of course, you can get your letters read and responded to right here, right now, on VOW The Voice, so the Port of the Week. You can consider this program to be our pre-New Year's program because that's exactly what it is. I know New Year's is just around the corner, but this program is going to be uploaded before New Year's, and then you're in for a real treat here. You can expect for another program to be uploaded on or around New Year's, too. So you're getting two shows out of this. This program is going to be kind of like the older VORWs from 2014, in that this is mostly going to be just fan mail centric, because you'll see I have something planned for the New Year's one. I do, I'm planning something for it. So, with that being said, I want to read all your letters and respond to them properly in this VORW. I do. First and foremost, it's 11.38 p.m. Monday the 28th of December 2015, soon to be Tuesday the 29th of December 2015, and I hope to get it up Tuesday morning at some point. Probably the very early morning hours, should I say. I hope you're doing well. I sincerely do. I really do. Something bothering me with my teeth right now. I don't know what. Looking at them in the mirror. Huh. Oh well. So be it. Such is life, right? Oh well. Such is life. Ladies and gentlemen. So it's been a while, it's been nearly three weeks since we've last done a VORW, and I've been busy. I have, I've been busy. Um, I did a bit of traveling, and I'm in a different part of the nation as I record this, hence the different locations, as I imagine you can tell. I'm, a di I'm in a different part of the nation right now, and just for the holiday season, I'm just visiting someone very special to me. So that's why I'm in a, a different locale, I suppose you can say. So anyways, before we get to fan mail, which there is a lot to read, because it's, you know, almost three weeks worth, before, before I, I get to that, I do have something I want to talk to you all about. And that is of a regional establishment, you know, mostly in the, you know, the mid-Atlantic to southern United States. It is a regional establishment known as Cookout. You saw lately I did a review of it. And I just want to take a moment to talk about this establishment because it is unlike any other place I've ever been to. Especially like those in, in Review Bra Land. I've never seen a place like Cookout. And for some of us, myself included, before I was here, I have... You know, I've, I've, I've never heard of Cookout before, really. I mean, maybe someone in a comment or something have, have posted Review Cookout, you know, once or twice, but I've never taken it seriously. I mean, there wasn't any cookouts near me. But Cookout is really a remarkable thing. It really is an absolutely remarkable establishment. And it's just something that I've, I've just never seen before. You know, normally... I, I, I talk about price of reviews and, you know, of items to review. Normally, unfortunately, and a lot of people don't like this, someone actually said, he's never watching my videos again because of this. I thought that was a little harsh, but, you know, to each his own. Because I always seem to talk about price from a negative light. You know. I, I tend to say... Things are a little too expensive, a little too often, apparently. 
And perhaps I do. Perhaps I do, but just, just to me, I, I always just seem to think that, you know, for the things, for the prices, some things are priced. I just don't think the quality is all there. For instance, for instance, you know, it's Nathan's hot dog for four bucks that I got when I was up there doing the public review. You know, a four dollar hot dog. That was nothing special to it. There's just some, you know, hot dog sitting on the edge of the grill with 30 others there for four bucks. You know, isn't that a little expensive? A cheap slice of pizza. By cheap, I mean poor quality. From Zbarro for four dollars. I, mean, I think that's a little expensive, should I say. I think the hot dog should be around two dollars. I think the pizza slice should be around two dollars, maybe three. That's just me. But at this cookout place, this cookout establishment, that is far from the truth. I have been frequenting this establishment lately. I went there today, as a matter of fact. And at this place called Cookout, they have a vast menu, but the thing they're really known for is a cookout tray. I think that's it's called a tray. And for around $5, you can get a main dish, which I always get a double hamburger. And you can get all these sides, two sides. And normally when you think of sides, you know, you think of french fries. You know, usually just french fries or onion rings, perhaps. But here, a side, yes, well, it may, if you choose, could be onion rings or french fries. You can get a full-blown chicken wrap as a side. Or a full-blown quesadilla as a side. I think you can even get a hot dog as a side. I'm not sure. I'm not going to go that far. But I think so. So I get a double hamburger with bacon and ketchup. I get two Cajun chicken wraps, which are mostly, again, just chicken wraps with, you know, with uh, hot sauce. And then they give you this massive-sized drink. Or a shake. Which they're very well known for, should I say. All for five dollars, for the most part. Sometimes I might charge you extra for the shake, so maybe five, six bucks. And that's it. And you're getting all this food, and it's not crappy food either, either, should I say. Decent tasting food for that price. And that's just something I've never really... I've never seen from a... A major chain. Or any sort of chain, or any sort of fast food place anymore. I never have. Normally, it's the exact opposite. You get lower quality food for a higher price. But here, you get decent quality food for a low price. So I've really been making the most of it. And I mean, these chicken wraps, which are sides, they're virtually free. Okay. I mean, some places will charge you five bucks for a double burger with bacon. I mean, look at five guys for the most part. Yeah, the quality is unmatched, but still, it's the same item. Double burger with bacon. So you're virtually getting these two chicken wraps free. And it's not, they're not cheating you either. Yeah, it's nothing Cajun about it. It's just, you know, a, a wrap and a tortilla with some lettuce and some cheese and some hot sauce. But they give you a full-blown chicken tendy, okay? I mean, they give you a full-blown chicken strip. And that's unmatched. They're not chintzy about it. Very well-breaded. That's a full-blown chicken strip right there. Pretty much free of charge. This massive drink, almost free of charge. I just think that's very interesting. I've never seen a place like this before. Very cheap and good food. And that's something that you usually don't see. Usually with price, most of the time comes quality. But sometimes in very few, very rare exceptions, that's different. And cookout is one of those exceptions. This is very interesting, and I was thinking about it. And I was thinking, you know, it would be very nice if one opened up in New York. But I just don't think that it would do too well up there. I don't. You know? I just don't. That's just, that's just my opinion. That's just my thoughts, my little... My little digressions. 
Anyway, anything else to talk about here? Hope you've had a great Christmas, should I say. If any of you care one single bit, it's going to be a sad day for radio on the 31st of December. Very sad day, should I say. Why is that, review, bro? Why, why is that? Well, if you live in Europe, I guess it's more pertinent to you. But AM radio in Europe, okay? We all know in the U.S., AM radio is still, still pretty popular, right? Every car usually has AM radio still. All the big corporations still invest in AM radio. And there's still a lot of AM stations that are going very strong. Especially a lot of news stations. Okay. Especially if you're an East Coast person, you'll know of, you know, WCBS 880, 1010 Winds, WFAN on 660, and so on and so forth. You'll know of all these AM stations. A lot of people still listen to. Get your news, your sports reports, that's mostly it. But there's a lot of real good stations that are still going real strong in the U.S. Some religious stations, a music station here and there. Some foreign language stations. Sometimes you'll hear the BBC on the medium wave, or AM as they call it. Right, so AM radio is still doing great in the U.S. In Europe, however, it's a different story. AM radio is going downhill fast. I mean, it's going through a rapid decline in Europe. And you know, I'm a, if you don't know this already, I'm a real radio enthusiast. So I monitor all this stuff. On the 31st of December, and anyone who else is, who is interested in European radio, try to QSL these stations and get verification from them while you can, because they're only going to be up for a few longer. On December 31st, 2015, French medium wave transmissions will end. So Radio France, the organization of all French national radio programs, will be shutting down all AM stations in the nation of France. Meaning, Radio France International, France Radio Info, and I believe France Bleu, which is mostly a music station, are all going off air <coughs> via AM. And that's on frequencies of 603, 711, 1206, 1242, 1377, 1404, 1494, 1557, 864, 1278, and 1494 again. All those frequencies are going off the air in France. And for Germany, all radio stations of Deutschland Funk which is on an additional four frequencies are going off the air as well. And in the nation of Luxembourg, RTL radio on 1440 is also going off the air. So all these stations, all these stations on the 31st, they're all going off the air. So majority of AM stations in Germany, Luxembourg, and France are all going off the air on the 31st. I know most people don't care. I know I just wasted your time, but for you know anyone who does, anyone who's interested in radio, uh, I definitely suggest listening to these stations, enjoying them while they last. Because remember, after the 31st, they're never going to be on the air again via AM or medium wave. They never will, so enjoy them while they're still there. Especially RTL that has some great music usually in the mornings or late nights over here. And if you're interested in QSL cards, please write to Deutschland Funk. They do QSL, and I do have a card from them. So if that interests you, go for it. Because they'll only be there for just a few more days, and you'll never be able to get a card from them ever again. With that out of the way, let's begin reading letters, shall we? Let's. Hi. Just to write to you as a long-term fan to say how much I appreciate your work and how it improves my mood and allows me to cope with my anxiety for a moment. It's quite amazing how comfy and soothing your voice can be. Just wondering if you have some sort of mailing address so people can send you some stuff, like foreign snacks and Euro energy drinks. Uh, 
Also, for a mailbag question, I don't believe you're a fan of alcohol, but what is your opinion on good quality whiskey, cigars, and the like? Thank you for your content, and may your, your lapels be wide and strong. Well, thank you for writing. I do not have a mailing address at this point, so I do not really take take requests right now. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll get a P.O. box at some point. As for whiskey and cigars, again, I don't really... I don't drink and I don't smoke, but, you know, it's just me. Just because I don't drink and smoke, I'm not one of those people that says, you know, well, you know, just because I don't drink and I don't smoke, I don't think you should either. I'm not like that. I figure, you know, if you want to have, you know, you want to drink, that's fine by me. And if you want to have a smoke, that's fine by me. But, you know, I'll just say no thanks. That's just me. I'm not willing to impress anything upon anyone else's life or their lifestyle. Greetings, review bra. Hope you're having a good one and enjoying the holidays. I'm usually not one for celebrations, but I cannot help but get into a festive mood around Christmas times. Though the ice can be a nightmare to deal with as far as driving goes, I still love December and the comfy atmosphere that it brings. Anyway, to answer your question, we have not yet set up our Christmas tree. We usually do, however, and decorate it with some basic trinkets. I always find myself fascinated by a lit Christmas tree. Somehow, it gives a kind of warmth despite not radiating heat. Hopefully, we'll have one up before the holiday itself. Below is a link to an image I made by taking a screenshot of your recent toothpaste review and then putting it into an image filter. I really like how it came out, and I hope you do too. And I'd be honored if you used it for an upcoming VORW. Take care and happy holidays. <laughs> I think that's pretty neat. I do. That looks like almost almost like some kind of painting. So as you can probably see now, that's the that's the image for this VORW for most of it. And with that, that brings me an idea. And thank you also for writing. Christmas trees are always very nice. That brings me an idea just for... That just brings me an idea for a question for this VORW. I know it's going to be very short in regards to the next one, but I'm going to be responding to this not in the next VORW, but in the one after that, so you have plenty of time to answer this question. The question for this program is... Was, was was 2015 a good year for you? I know it's a personal one. If you don't want to answer that, I get it. That's fine by me. Don't. But if you feel comfortable answering this, by all means, let me know. Do you think 2015 was a good year? And you can actually, let's change something. This could be in any regard you'd like. I'm giving you a lot of freedom on this one. This could be if you think it was a good year for you personally, for the world, however you want to answer it. In general, do you think 2015 was a good year? And take that question however you want. If you feel free comfortable talking about your own life, you can talk about that. And you can say, I think 2015 was a great year for me. I got that new job I wanted. You can say, I don't think 2015 was a good year for me. I lost that job. And so on and so forth. You can say, well... I think 2015 was a pretty crappy year for the world, you know, with the Islamic State and everything, destabilization of more countries. I think it was an awful year. I'd say, well, you know, things happened, but I think, you know, technology progressed. I think, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Is that too? So it's a very open ended question. In general, if you feel comfortable answering, do you think 2015 was a good year? And when I'm also. And you could feel free to ask that question to me, too. And I'm going to be talking about that in the next VORW. It's going to be a New Year's-themed VORW program. Feel free to write in www.youtube.com slash user slash report of the week. Click on the About tab. And from there, click on Send a Message. Type your message and click Send. Or feel free to email me at repweekinterview1 at gmail.com. That's R-E-P-W-E-E-K-I-N-T-E-R-V-I-E-W-1 at gmail.com. Or... Email us at vorwinfo at gmail.com. This is VORW, the voice of the Report of the Week. 
fan fan art is always appreciated. Simply post your image to a reputable hosting site or link it to me directly via email or post a link via email or YouTube message. If you'd like your piece of fan art to be the first of 2016, now's your chance. Hey man, just wanted to say I love the videos, been binge watching them ever since I discovered this page. Thanks for doing these, seriously, a very relaxing 90s vibes, nostalgic and real. Just wanted to say keep doing what you're doing, you're bound to end up on TV or something. Thank you again and have a great day, Randy R. Well thank you very much for, for writing and I'm, it's my pleasure to be able to bring about those 90s vibes from the, from the good old days, right? Hello. To answer the last VOW's question regarding Christmas trees, I can set my family follows our national tr tradition of putting up a Christmas tree on Christmas Eve and no earlier, and it's taken down on Three Kings Day, January 6th. We always use a real tree for the reasons you mentioned, as well as the fact that the artificial ones look a lot less, quote, warm, pleasant, and just don't put me in the Christmas mood at all. I also have an unrelated question for you regarding fashion. What are some of the websites that you use and could recommend for buying suits? I'd like to start dressing better, and like you, can't stand modern men's fashion. Maybe I'm looking in all the wrong places, or it's just that older suits are much less available in the country. Can't really find anything that would interest me on eBay, and I'm not very familiar with other websites, be they American or European based. If you have any recommendations, I would appreciate it if you message me back with some suggestions and or respond in the next VORW. And as always, thank you for consistently great content on your channel. Thank you very much for writing. You know, for me, I actually look on eBay and that's where I get most of the suits for good prices. Okay? That is. eBay is tough, though. Okay? It's tough. The reason being is because there's a lot of stuff on it and not a lot of that stuff is good. So it's like you're trying to find a diamond in the rough, but those diamonds are there. So you really have to sort, sift through all the crap, and you're going to find something good. You have to look, you have to look, and you have to look. And with every single year, these suits get more and more sparse. But they're still there, and you just really have to look, check frequently, because they will be there. Secondly, and people have criticisms of this, but so be it. They have a bad reputation. People will say, oh, yeah, well, I only wear $1,000 suits that are skin tight. Well, ignore those people. Okay? Because no one's going to be able to tell the difference one way or another. And I've never gotten a suit from here, but I have gotten ties. Simply look at a thrift store. And I kid you not. Look at a thrift store. Perhaps not for suits or for pants, but for neckwear, for ties. Because you will find some really good old school looking ties that are literally maybe 99 cents to a dollar. Utterly cheap. Excellent vintage ties that you will not find any, anywhere else. Like right now. This tie that I'm wearing right now is a vintage Bill Blast tie. Okay? Very nice pattern wide, perfect condition, has this red pattern, this red like crisscross pattern with some gold in it, very nice tie, and I got that, you know, is was, was gotten at a, a thrift store for maybe a dollar, dirt cheap, excellent tie, no one can tell the difference, you can say I got this tie for 45 bucks and people would believe you, and a lot of people dismiss, dismiss thrift stores because so they think, oh yeah, well, well, you know, only poor people shop there. I'm above that. Ignore that. That's just, that's just utter ignorance. Because you'll find some excellent stuff at those stores. And don't feel bad about it either. You know, I go there, I go there sometimes and find some good acquisitions there in the regards of neckwear that you'll find nowhere else. And another main shopping place that you would never expect that would have good dress pants is actually Kohl's, okay? Now, I don't know if they have those in Europe, but they do have them over here. There's a store called Kohl's, but you have to go in the store to look at this. 
But on the clearance rack, you'll find some good traditional dress pants still. You know, the pair of pants I'm wearing right now is tan dress pants, pleated, creased, and cuffed. And, you know, very roomy, a little wider leg. But very traditional, very comfortable. And I was able to get these on a clearance rack for about, you know, 10, 15 bucks. You know, from a very reputable brand at a reputable store. Just gotta look. You just gotta look. But sometimes that's the fun of it all. To be able to look and, after all your hard work, you're able to find something that you like. So I hope that helped. On to the next. I hope all is well. I've really been enjoying your content, and it seems like things are going well for you. Just a quick note, I was looking on Google randomly at some things and came across a 4chan archive where someone impersonated me while you were in a particular thread. Either way, if an imposter me said anything hurtful, I'm sorry. Either way, hope all is well. I felt compelled to bring this to your attention. Well, thank you. And uh, no worries, no harsh feelings whatsoever. Thank you very much for letting me know. On to the next. Dear Report of the Week. I started watching your videos about 18 months ago. And I've been meaning to write in for some time now, but I could never think of anything to say or I'd write something and then forget to send it in. Even though I watch a lot of your videos and subscribe to a lot of channels on YouTube, I must admit that I get most excited when I see new upload for the Report of the Week and usually watch it straight away. If you'll indulge me, I'd like to spend a little time describing the features of your channel and your videos I really like. Well, certainly. Firstly, I admire your no-editing policy. I always feel like I'm seeing a genuine article when I watch your videos, including the occasional mistake or mishap. You also avoid the flashy intros or the jump cuts that are so trendy these days, which on other channels can be distracting and annoyingly headache-inducing at times. Secondly, I, and clearly many others, also appreciate and admire your sense of style. It's always interesting to see what suit combination you're wearing in your latest video, and sometimes even feels like I'm attending a lecture from maybe early in the 20th century, when lecturers, and indeed students, always made an effort to look presentable in public. Speaking of lectures, I was glad to see the return of the Idle Mind series a few months ago. I hope to see more episodes of this in the future. And last but not least, I appreciate the time and care that you take in each review to really analyze a product in depth. Some people might think that 10 minutes or more spent discussing a single energy drink or maybe a pizza is excessive, but I think the opposite is true. I've seen reviewers whose average video length is barely two minutes, and I ask myself, is there anything interesting that can be said in such a short time? It seems the average attention span these days can be significantly shortened, and it's good to see someone fighting against this trend. Sometimes I like settling down to watch a good, long 15 minute review, perhaps over breakfast or light lunch, although in the case of the longer VRWs, I might split it into one hour listening blocks over two days to prolong the pleasure. <laughs> in any case, I hope you get to continue doing what you are doing for many more years into the future, since it has brought me and thousands of others countless hours of informative entertainment on the topic of future reviews, and I noted in VORW number 107 that you are still considering title suggestions for your new series of non-energy drink beverage reviews. And I hope you find something as witty as Energy Crisis and Running on Empty to accompany them. I hope you don't mind me adding a few more of my own personal suggestions to the box. Keeping with your current naming theme, you can try Acquired Taste, Drink Up, Happy Hour, Cheers, and BYOB. Number five stands for bring your own bottle, or sometimes beer. You may be familiar with it, it's a common phrase in the UK, but I thought it warranted an explanation nonetheless, in case it isn't used in the US. Whatever your decision, I certainly look forward to more videos in this new series, and I hope my humble suggestions were perhaps useful in that regard. In answer to your question in the last fan mail segment, I do have a small Christmas tree set up in my apartment. I'm currently living and working in the Russian Federation, but I was born in the UK. Christmas here is celebrated in early January, but the Russians still get very much into the holiday, into the spirit of the holiday in their own way. 
although many of the Western traditions are attached to New Year's rather than Christmas. So, for example, I have heard the Christmas tree, sometimes called a New Year's tree, although by no means universal. My tree is unfortunately very small plastic and costs 94 rubles, about a dollar thirty-four, but it's my own little offering to the bloodthirsty gods of Yuletide nonetheless. I'm aware that I've gone on for quite a bit now, so I want to end this message of a question or two for our dear lecturer. I can't really narrow it down, down and say that I have a favorite video of yours. I will quite happily watch any and all of them, since they are almost all of a consistently high quality. But if pressed, I would say that from Energy Crisis, I really enjoy the Muscle Monster series of reviews, whereas from Run of an Empty, I always go back to Scream and Sicilian Holy Pepperoni Pizza for good laugh every once in a while. So I was wondering, first of all, do you personally have a favorite review? Perhaps one that you thought went particularly well, or one you remember fondly for one reason or another? Uh, certainly. Favorite review of mine that I think went exceptionally well, or that I just just happened to like. I'd say my favorite. I, I'd have to say one of my favorites. I'll give two favorites. Number one. I just happened to like the Planet Wings Suicide Wings review. And I like that one because it just gives a candid look into things. It was very unpleasant to make, but made for a good video, nonetheless. Because I delved into these wings, thinking that they'd be spicy, but not that they would be the hottest wings I've ever eaten, when in the end they were. So, there was that. That video. Which I think was something else. Which, you know, I just like that I gave a candid look into everything. And another one that I liked was the water review that I did a few months ago, because I think that was just an, I think that was just a good good review where I was still able to be silly but give a full blown you know review energy crisis style review on just water, you know, on just plain water. I'd say those are my two favorites. And let's see what his second question is. Second. I noticed that you updated your channel photo once again. And this is a great picture, if you don't mind me saying, and I'd be interested to know where this was taken since I don't recognize the background from any reviews. It looks almost like a classic American diner, perhaps a future venue for a public review. My apologies if five of these questions have been asked before, but I'm interested to know nonetheless. Wishing you all the best for the future, I hope this message reaches you through the bowels of YouTube is somewhat intact, indeed it did. On my end, I can report good reception for VORW from the Russian Steppe. Best regards from James. And thank you very much for writing. Thank you for taking the time to make that very nice message. I will say that this picture was taken in an establishment known as Johnny Rockets, which goes for kind of like a uh, goes for kind of like a vintage look, you know, like a vintage American style diner, and it serves burgers and shakes and the like. But they go for like this 50s style diner atmosphere. It's called Johnny Rockets. If you're ever able to have, you know, go to one, I recommend that they have very nice burgers and, and good shakes too. They're not cheap, but they're good. It's, you know, some place to go to every now and then. If you're able to muster up 10 US dollars or so for a burger. Good quality sit down meal. <coughs> Thank you again for writing. Dear Report of the Week, I hope this message finds you well. I haven't wrote in quite some time, so for that I apologize. I have a great idea for another segment to incorporate into the channel. Whoever considered driving around to different towns reviewing the quality of air in a given town? You would get out of your car, take a big breath of air, swish it around in your mouth, and give your two cents on it. 
If you're close to New York City, you can even do a separate review of each of the five boroughs. I'd love to hear your opinion on how the air tastes and smells. Anyway, keep up the good and consistent content. All the best. Thank you for writing. And air, air reviews, that's an interesting, interesting suggestion. You never know. Thank you for, thank you for letting me know. You never know what can happen. I think it would make for a fun video to at least do it once, so. Hi John, sorry about your camera. What a faithful companion standing beside you through the ups and downs. Rest in peace, camera. You were a loyal and selfless worker to the end. You will be missed. I hope you're well. I'm doing pretty well myself. And thanks for your advice in response to my last message about my procrastination. I think it helped. Finals week is almost over and I'm on schedule to turn everything in on time and do fine. Regarding the VORW question you asked about Legos, I have I used to have a few boxes of them, and I loved taking them out and building different things <laughs> and playing with the characters. When we, that is my older brother and I, would buy new packs, we would follow the directions and put them together one time, and then they got dismantled and added to the unorganized piles of the boxes. We liked to build other things that required creativity. It's been probably seven or eight years since I played with them. I think my mother gave them to my nephew a few years ago. And I miss them sometimes, but not enough to go and buy more. Hope you have a good week and keep up the good views, your friend James. Thank you for writing, James. Thank you very much. And yeah, the camera, it was a good camera. It was, it's unfortunately gone now, but it was a good camera while it lasted. It did, and I, I'm glad the, the advice hopefully helped. And yes, we can always miss some of those Legos. Legos are fun, though. They are. This individual writes, Sorry for sending two messages in one VORW, but I feel this issue requires an attention of an expert. An internet acquaintance of mine has recently adapted a ridiculous fashion sense that he, consider that he genuinely considers to look good and dresses this way in public. Alongside of other internet friends, you've tried to convince him that certain fashion choices simply should not be shown off in public but he still considers this in good taste. As someone who actually dresses well, what do you say to this? He provides me with this Imger, Imger link and this Instagram profile link as well. Let's see what he brings us. Okay, let's see. Well, look for yourself and I think it needn't be even mentioned. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. I mean, this is one of those guys who has zero self-awareness, I think. That's all I can say. I mean, you look at that picture right there, this first one here. He's going for like a... I don't know. I don't even know how you describe that. That doesn't even look... You know, he's going with like a Nazi... colored tan shirt and an SS cap. With a bow tie and these... rolled up shorts. Now this really almost looks like a pseudo-military look. I mean, it's just disgraceful, really. You know, it's just... If he's literally willing to, to, to wear this out, I mean, this one he's dressed like a Nazi officer, almost. I just don't know how he can, number one, dress like this seriously. Here he looks like an Orthodox priest. I don't know how he can wear this seriously and number two not be publicly shamed for wearing that and be called you know a nazi sympathizer or whatever it may be what i my only advice to him is literally just throw out the entire wardrobe and that's it maybe keep some of the pants but that's about it save it as costume and just throw it all out that's all I can tell him. Literally, just start from scratch. But some people are so set in their ways, I mean... Nothing you can do to change it. You know, if you wanted me to stop wearing suits, I couldn't. It wouldn't happen. But you can see for yourself these ridiculous outfits. And if someone's willing to wear this in public, I'm sure he's gotten laughed at many a times. and Just ridiculous, that's all I can say to that. On to the next. To answer the question about the Christmas tree, no, I do not have one up. I was going to set it up on December 5th, but my cat passed away the day before. 
I haven't felt like setting it up. I do have a lighted wreath on my door and a lighted garland sitting on my entertainment center. That's about all I have set up. Well, thank you very much for writing. Hey, review bro. My fiance and I have been watching your videos for a long, long time now, even before you blew up and became a celebrity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not gonna be mentioned there. Not gonna be mentioned there. I also listen to shortwave radio. It was actually my Christmas present when I was 14. My dad was going to have an antenna installed on our roof because my signal was too bad to pick up a lot. My main interest was in the number stations. It's really nice to see, A, that there are people out there who still know how to dress well, and B, that there are people out there who still love shortwave radio. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention that. Anyway, sorry for the bad grammar. I don't talk too much to anyone these days. I don't care much for anything. But I want to keep being you. And I want you to keep being you. And you're doing an amazing job in keeping your head up and posting these videos. You're mature for your age, and that's fantastic. And if I ever need someone to talk to, I'm here. There are videos on my channel, but I don't believe you'd find them interesting. But I do mainly art now. I'm a performance artist, so it's very weird to grasp. But that was always hard to grasp for most people. Thank you very much for writing, and it's always great to see someone else who's interested in shortwave radio. Thank you again for writing. Hi, how tall are you? With regards, Terry. Six foot seven, my friend. Is that serious? One could only guess. Dearest review, bro. So I haven't written to you in a while. To answer your questions from the last two VRWs, I used to play with Lego a lot as a kid. The biggest sets that I had were the Egyptian series, lots of space in the Star Wars Lego, and the soccer field with the stadium. The last Lego sets I bought were a couple of years ago from the Architecture series, I bought the Guggenheim Gallery in New York and Frank Lloyd Wright's Fallen Water House. Yes, I remember those. Especially the Fallen Water House, too. That was something else. I have a Christmas tree set up in my house right now. It's fully decorated. Every year, some family friends bring us a tree that they cut down themselves, legally, <laughs> and bring it over. It looks like a Charlie Brown tree, but I prefer the uniqueness of a tree compared to the ones from a lot. While I was finishing some papers this semester, I had a minor epiphany while studying the historical figure of the dandy. Review, bra, you are the modern-day dandy. The dandy was a figure from the mid-19th century Europe that placed a strong importance on refined language and physical appearance. They also became a flaneur, a person who wanders the streets with no particular aim in order to examine modern life from a distance, and I couldn't help noticing the similarities between your actions, dress, and night walks to this figure. If you want to read more about the dandy, please check out Charles Baudier's writing on the subject. I link the satirical publication about the dandy from 1819 for your enjoyment. Sorry for the long message. Keep up the excellent work. Well, thank you very much, and I think that would be pretty interesting to read. Thank you again. You're down to some Netflix and chill sometime? No. Absolutely not. And your smiley face isn't gonna convince me otherwise. Dear Review Bra, Hope your Christmas went well and we could hear more of the regression of life. Well, I enjoyed reading. My husband in particular can relate to it, and it's really gotten his interest. We're currently staying with his parents in Akita, Japan isn't celebrated in a traditional way here, or treated as a traditional holiday, that they need to be told. It's more keen to Valentine's. Christmas Eve is a very romantic day for couples. To answer your question, we do have a Christmas tree set up. It's a small one we picked up just a week ago. It's sparsely decorated for the cat's sake, and only about three foot. The house is equivalent to an old-fashioned cottage, and the interior is easily damaged, so we decided to play it safe. Have a good New Year from Jess. Thank you for writing. That's pretty neat to see how Christmas is celebrated so differently over in Japan 
than it is over here, but that makes a lot of sense, and you know, I would have guessed as to so. Dear Review Bra, great work on the latest VORWs. In response to your questions, I would be all for hearing the preview of your other short story. Also, my family does have a Christmas tree up. I won't really talk religion to my family, but I don't think any of the people in my family actually believe in religion, except for maybe my grandmother. We all just seem to think of Christmas, the tree, etc., as nice traditions that we see no real reason to stop. Does your family have any special traditions that you look forward to during the holiday season? Hope all is well from Tyler. P.S. Whatever happened to Orca Man? Well, Orca Man is still out there somewhere. I mean, he's... I figure he's out there somewhere. The Orca Man. Perhaps now that he's been mentioned, maybe we've summoned him again. Orca Man, if you're out there, hope you had a good Christmas. Please come back. And likewise, if there's any traditions, pretty much just standard Christmas traditions, you know. You know, Christmas tree and the like, but... Well, not really too Christmassy. Never really put up any Christmas lights except for some lights on the tree. You know. There's some people that have to have the full, you know, Santa's sled and, you know, however many dozen reindeer in the yard. And, you know, the legions of blow-up snowmen and everything, but I, I ain't about that life. Really not. Yo, report of the week. If you got a VRW before Christmas, Merry Christmas. Otherwise, oops. No worries, I read yours before Christmas, so thank you for wishing me a Merry Christmas. Thank you. And Merry Bladed Christmas on this writer's behalf. Ryubra, please, please, please do a Queen's Speech style vlog for Christmas Day in 2015. Well, I did the Christmas blowout. That's seasonal. That's my little version of a of the Queen's speech, if you will. Oof. Sipping on a Red Bull Total Zero Cherry Edition right now. It has this kick to it. Greetings, Report of the Week. Hope you had a nice Christmas. I have a food review request for you. Do you think you can review some items from McDonald's all-day breakfast menu? I watched your idle mind episode on the decline of McDonald's, and I tend to agree, but I do find that the breakfast menu has always been solid, especially now that you can order items at any time. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the menu. You'll definitely be able to see what I can do. I do have a special McDonald's review hopefully coming up, and I think you guys are going to like this one, but I'm not going to say any more regarding that. But all I can say is I think you're going to like it. I think it's going to really take a lot of people by surprise. I think you guys are going to like this one. It'll be coming up in due time. And our last letter in YouTube just says, Be careful. Well, thanks. Thank you for caring, I guess. I'll try to be careful. What is this? Four comments. If you blow your hair, is beautiful. Thanks. Boy, this guy's upset about something. He he posted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven comments on the water review. He said, "One more sip, you effing liar, liar. Sorry, but still, you're an effing liar. Damn it, liar." Okay. Said one more bite, you effing liar. It says block him. He's just spamming at this point. I know he's trying to be cute, but still, I don't think that's really the funniest thing in the world. Let's get him taken care of. I said I was going to block you, and I'm not an effing liar this time around, because with this one click right here, let's see. So don't call me a liar on that regard. All right. That concludes our reading for the YouTube. Hold on, what's this? I see a link. I might be fan mail here. 
This is modern art. Please look at it, Dad. What's the What's the whole deal with people calling me Dad? Everyone calls me Dad or Daddy. I don't get it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's certainly modern art to me. <laughs> I don't think I'd really. <laughs> I don't know if I'd put that one up with a VORW image. Okay, now to the emails, ladies and gentlemen. First, we'll check out the main email, rapweekinterview1 at gmail.com. I have a little bit of a stuffy nose, my right nostril's a bit clogged up. So I apologize there. Let's just check the date for the last VORW upload. That was the 12th, okay. Okay. Let's see this. Okay. <clears throat> Dear of you, bro. Thank you for the wallet advice in VOIW 107. I, of course, will not spend more than $15 on a wallet and will most likely be frequenting TJ Maxx for a new one. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll answer that privately. Let's mark that special. This letter says, Greetings, Report of the Week. Thank you for sharing more of Aggression of Life with us. I enjoy the continuation of the story, and I look forward to the rest of it. And yes, I for one would love to hear you read your short story about the night walk. And I'm sure many others will want to hear it as well. I asked in one of the previous VORWs when night walks will be coming back to the show, and I'm sorry to hear about your injured toe. Hopefully it will recover quickly. Thank you. Take your time getting back out there. And if there is to be a short story about a night walk, then that will definitely be able to satisfy me until the actual night walk's return. I have a few questions for you. Apologies in advance for the lengthiness. In some of your videos, you mention 4chan every now and then, and I was wondering, what is your current relationship with 4chan? Do you ever visit, and if so, how often, and which boards? I know you've attained some sort of meme status on FIT, and I can also seem to recall that you did an, a mini AMA on R9K a while back. If you have not seen already, there is a somewhat new HIS, History and Humanities Board, which I think you may find interesting to check out. Speaking of history, I have a history-related question to ask you. If you had to fight in one war at any time in history, and on any side, which would you choose? I also wanted to ask, what are your thoughts on Cinnabon? I didn't see any reviews of their products on your channel. I don't know if you don't have one in your area or just haven't done a review there yet. Personally, I think they're okay, but I would be interested to hear your take or see you do a review. Okay. I'm going to be reading a little bit of the Nightwalk story in the next VORW, so stay tuned to that. As for my relationship with Fortune, I don't go I don't go there too often anymore. You know. I used to uh I used to be a real frequent flyer, if you will, on the R nine K board, but you know, it's really really getting me down a bit. You know, so I'm trying to been trying to wean off of that. And yes, I'm I'm well aware of the, the meme status on fit. I remember back in late 2013, that was the heyday of that. I had all these drawings that were coming in when people were making me some sort of bodybuilder or something. History and humanities. History is always neat. And history related. If I had to fight on any war, at any side, I mean, this would be under the, the fact that I wouldn't be scared of death. You know? I think... 
You know, I think it would be interesting to fight in World War II. In my opinion, World War I was just too brutal. But I think it would also be fun, or not fun necessarily, but more interesting, to fight in the Revolutionary War. And it would be very bloody and gory, but I think it would be interesting to see that style of combat back in the day. With the single shot muskets and the like. He says, and lastly, you're not a big movie guy. But I was curious, are you going to see the new Star Wars movie? Have you seen the original trilogy, the prequels, and if so, your thoughts on all of them? I don't know if I'm going to see the new Star Wars movie, but I have seen the original trilogy and the rest. I've seen all six. You know? I have. And truth be told, I think that the originals were better by far than the newer ones. I just think they were done, you know? Yeah, they're, you know, more... No, it's not, you know, no real CG on the old ones, but I just like those better. I do. I think that really, some of the some of the newer ones, especially like Attack of the Clones, and especially that one, especially Attack of the Clones. I, I think that's what it was called, right? The second, the second of the newer ones. It seemed like the whole movie, yes, while well, it advanced the plot a little bit. It was like the whole thing was really just to show off the new CG and to show off how much crap they can do with the computers. That yeah, look at me, I can get 10,000 droids on this screen. You know, it was just too action oriented and less storyline based. But from first hand accounts, I've heard that the new Star Wars film is good, so you never know. Thank you for writing. Fan mail. I love your reviews in VORW so much. I doodle this at work, which is where I usually listen to you. You make time spent in the office fly by and I appreciate your insights. I drove up to Wendy's today and instantly thought of you when I saw the bacon Gouda burger advertisement. Here's a doodle I did during my free time. Thanks for being you, review bra from Caitlin. This is also the second piece of artwork in this program. Thank you for your drawing. Hi, Mr. Review Bra. I'm a semi-new fan of yours. I mostly listen to the VORW shows. They're very relaxing, not in a, oh, Mr. Review Bra's voice is so dreamy sort of way. It's just nice to hear someone talking, you know? You've got a consistent tone in your voice, just casually talking about stuff. And don't go on angry, expletive-filled rants about things, unless you do do that sometimes. I haven't listened to many of the VORWs yet. Would you consider someone a fan if they watched more of the VORWs than the reviews. Yeah, I'd say the biggest fans are mostly probably the VORW listeners. Um, that's who I consider my biggest fans to be. So for instance, I just consider someone to be a bigger fan if they listened to 100 VORWs rather than watched 100 reviews. Because if someone's willing to sit through an hour, right, just think of it this way. If someone's willing to sit through one hour or one VORW, which now ranges on about two hours, Okay. Right. That's almost the equivalent of having to watch 12 reviews. Because they sometimes usually range in about 10 minutes long, we'll say. So, someone who watches more VORWs than reviews, I'd say, is, is a bigger fan, in my opinion. But yeah, it's nice. Especially when I'm sort of anxious or jittery for no damn reason. I can just put on the show while multitasking on some other thing. It usually makes me chill out a bit. I'm not very consistent, though. I hope I can send regular emails about the question of the week. As to the question this week, we do have a Christmas tree up. It has blue and silver ball ornaments on it, a blue ribbon wrapped around it, and a silver star on top. The tree itself is artificial and has lights already on it. I accidentally broke a, bro broke a light off the first year we got it, and that caused the lights to go out on tree branches on three branches. It's not too terribly noticeable, however. We put some old sheets around the base to look like snow and put a train set around that. My cat likes to curl up underneath the tree on the sheets and seeing her eyes glisten from the lights when she looks up is the cutest thing. So yeah, that's about it. I couldn't really think of much more relevant to say without rambling on. Well, thank you very much for writing and uh, thank you again.
glad to have you with us for the, the VORWs. It sounds pretty neat to have actually the whole little train set, you know, around the Christmas tree. I think that's pretty neat. Let's see what else we got. Hey, review bra. I was wondering if you could essentially shout out to my girlfriend, <laughs> Emma. Oh, it's Ema. Okay. Ema. We both love your show. And have been avid listeners of your for some time. I feel like I have seen the growth of your confidence in broadcasting, and it's great to see you. Love you, bro. Okay. I give a formal and official shout out. And I apologize again if I butcher this name. We'll pronounce it both ways. How's that? To Ima and Emmer, or Emma. We'll say that. How about that? Emma. We have a very formal and official shout out from the Port of the Week. Thank you again for writing, and you have been shouted out. Let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we got. Message for Voice of the Report of the Week. I enjoy your content a great deal. Your open and honest sharing of opinions is a refreshing change from the usual YouTube characters whose fake personas appeal to the masses. I've gone through some of your old videos, but cannot claim to be a review bra expert. I'm merely a keen observer, a keep observer. I'd say that your content, VORW in particular, has and does improve over the time. Hope you can cast your eye over some opinions, and I'll share my opinion on Christmas trees as requested. I used to love Christmas trees. I remember when I was a child, our tree would have many interesting Christmas type decorations hanging from it, along some Christmas, um, along some chocolate decorations I would steal and eat when I could. The Christmas tree seemed to touch the ceiling when I was a child, but now the Christmas tree seems a weedy and stubby affair with a few colored balls on it. The Christmas tree used to cement the feeling that it's the Christmas season, but now I never feel that. Can't remember when it stopped, but now it's just another sign that another year has passed, especially since my birthday falls on December 23rd. Did you ever consider getting another pet after the fish passed on? What would your ideal pet be? Currently, I have a cat that is getting on in years and spends nearly all day moving from sleeping spot to lazy spot. He only seems to be active and awake for a few minutes before dinner time, where he will walk back up and down the house, shouting at anyone who looks at them. Anyway, thanks for the shows. I do enjoy them. Happy Christmas. Thank you, and I, you know, as nice as the holiday season is, I can't help but feel like time is really going by at an accelerated rate myself. You know. Time for New Year's in a day or two. And with that, another year in review. It's amazing how it just goes by and by. You know. And I mean, just to think, just to think how, how fast time has gone by now compared to when I was but a boy, you know, long ago, when, you know, the months used to be like, like years almost, I remember when I was, I remember long ago when but a boy, around Christmas time, December used to seem like it was a year. It would just drag on and on. It used to be the highlight of my life for the most part. You know, Christmas time. It really used to be. Now Christmas is just, you know. It's a holiday and it's a very nice time of the year. And this Christmas, as a matter of fact, is the best one of my life. And a very beautiful thing. You know? But it's beautiful in a different way. Back when I was a child, it used to be something that I would really long away, you know, for free stuff. You know, for that latest toy, for that set, for that, you know, legion of Lego bricks or toy soldiers or whatever it might have been. It used to be for that. But, you know, Christmas is just different nowadays. Nowadays it's just, I consider it mostly not about, not about, again, same thing like with Thanksgiving. It's not about free stuff at all. To me now, Christmas is just about being, you know, with those who are important to you. And that's it. You know? You can care less if I get anything or not. To me, it's just about really being with, with those who matter to you. 
That's what I think Christmas is really all about. So, you know, it's just a different thing to me. But I think Christmas trees and all the lights and I think that can be very pretty as well. I was actually going on a <clears throat> a night drive a couple days back. I was looking at some of the Christmas lights. There was this one that had this whole little legion of penguins outside the house and I thought that was very cute. But yeah, time is really flying by. Before I know it, it'll be 2017. Ugh. Gosh. Can't even fathom that. You know? Kinda... You know, in a way, it kinda scares me to see time going by this... this fast and... Seeing how the world is just changing right in front of my eyes, you know? The world that I... The world, in an essence, that I belong in is... is fading away. Kinda sad to see, in a way. You know, it is. Look at the, you know, look at my thing that I said at the beginning, how radio in Europe especially is, you know, is starting to go away. You know, and that's one of my, that's my biggest hobby right there. You know, so this is kind of, kind of sad to see and who knows how different things will be when the 2020s roll around, but, you know, I just, just got to find a few things that, that give you solace. You just gotta stick close to them. And that's all you can do to keep on going. And in regards to getting another pet after the fish passed on, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm gonna... You know, as nice as cats and dogs are, they probably end up getting another fish. That's probably what I'd do. I like little fish. I think they can be very nice little pets. And I can't really pet them. You know, sometimes swim up to and look at you. And I do like fish. I like a little beta fish. So maybe one other day I'll get another beta fish. I might. Thank you for writing. Hey, review bra. I'm sorry to hear about your camera. It made me ex extremely sad to watch your video, knowing that it had been with all of us, just had been with you. Sing things with such sentimental value will not go forgotten. It's a sad day. Can't remember the question for this upcoming VORW, but I do just want to say how much I appreciate your content. And it means a lot that people like you are doing what they want to simply because they do. I'm glad people like you exist in this world. Well, thank you very much for writing. I do appreciate your message. And you know, truth be told, you know, I could understand. I was a little bit sentimental too when I thought about that camera, how it just, you know, how it was there with me through my life. And it really recorded so many moments of my life. And thanks to this little camera and, you know, how it, how it filmed and everything, you know, what it really did was, you know, it, uh, really changed my life. I mean, that was the camera that filmed the, the the famous pan pizza review. What if I had a different camera? Sometimes such minute little differences can change everything. What if the video for the pan pizza review is in 720p, say? What if, for instance, the thumbnail of the video looked different? What if that caused the person who posted it on Reddit to never click on this video? to never see this video. Therefore, the original Pan Pizza review is never posted on Reddit. This channel never gained really any attention. My life would be totally different. Isn't that crazy? That's just food for thought. It's a really great little camera and it's something I'm not gonna throw out. I'm gonna keep it with me. Hello, VORW. I just discovered a poem and wanted to recommend it to you and your viewers who enjoyed Regression of Life. It's called At One O'Clock in the Morning by Charles Bouldier. I came across it shortly after I listened to your story and I think it goes really well with the general themes of isolation and... Anyway, I'm sorry, I always mispronounce that word. 
E N N U I, N U I, I think it is. In Regression of Life. It's pretty long, so I honestly wouldn't recommend reading it on the air unless you have the airtime to spare. Maybe a few lines if you can. Thanks a lot as always, Nicole. It's called at 1 o'clock in the morning, and perhaps I'll read a little bit in the following program. That'll be New Year's. At 1 o'clock in the morning, it is titled. Thank you again for writing. Okay, let's see, let's see. No. No. You know, some of these people are real idiots, I'll tell you that. I mean, no offense to them at all, but they say, I want a business proposal. So I say, sure, you know, what do you have in mind? And 13 days later, he's never gotten back. You know, if someone's willing to to do something like that, and if you want to be a successful business person, at least be on top of things. Is there something wrong with that? I just don't understand otherwise. Dear Exalted One, It has been far too long, friend. The last time I gazed upon your supple cheeks, the moon, but a fleck of snow in the pitch heaven. Though I cannot wake to the sound of your singing on the daily, I do long for your videos. To begin, how are you? You may pause here to respond. I'm doing fine, thank you. Do you have any plans to for the winter? No, well, mostly just, you know, stay here. Manage a channel, manage a shortwave, and, you know, try to be as happy as I can be. Have you ever had Ebola River fever? You may pause here to respond. I have not. What is your opinion on Laurent Kabilia? You may pause here to respond. I've never heard of that. What, what that is, I believe that's an individual. Apparently, uh... President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Well, you know, if he if he moved the country forward, good. If he moved it back, awful. When was the last time you? <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna answer that. Dear review, bro, you are the you are a delectable morsel of marzipan. Since straight from the prophet, peace be upon him. I dream of you comforting bloodshot stare in the wee hours of the morning, imagining you taking a gentle drag from your methamphetamine pipe and running a hot razor over your whiskers. <laughs> then you would sit me down, ever the comforting daddy you be, and read me stories of the war. I imagine with your intense gaze and Panche for older suits. He must have had at least one Vietnam flashback. <laughs> I know you to be a child of the 1990s, but remember, you're never too young for a Vietnam flashback. <laughs> Next time you sit in your loo releasing. <laughs> releasing blank blank from your perfectly coiffed splinter. Remember me. That's will fulfill my dharma and allow me to finally achieve my final form. Always yours, Bob Jenkins, Privy Councilor of the National Assembly of Transnistria. P.S. I cleansed my anal glands of my dog last morrow. It was worth a watch on the tube of you. Thank you for that beautiful message and uh, <laughs> you made me laugh quite a bit for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, sometimes it's messages like this that make a VORW so special. Thank you for your writing, Mr. Jenkins. Hello review bra and listeners of VORW, I hope you're all doing well. I found your channel relatively recently, and oddly enough, on an unrelated Reddit post on the popular subreddit, Ask Reddit. The post was asking Redditors to describe the behavior of the weird kid they went to school with, and someone loosely described you, talking about the exceptional way you dress in the Energy Crisis series. 
you replied and linked your channel. Yes, indeed. Since I've started watching VORW, I've begun contemplated doing a YouTube series of my own in which I simply talk about anything. I feel it would be therapeutic and would eventually lead to, be me, lead to me being a more concise and generally more well-spoken. I think it would be more for me than for an audience. Do you think I should pursue this idea? Yes, yeah, certainly. I had an idea for VORW and I pursued it and this is what came of it. So go for it. It might start off slow, but eventually you'll get a rhythm and I think it would work out fine for you. As for Christmas trees, I have a pretty interesting and unconventional setup and situation. I have two smaller trees rather than one large tree. <coughs> and unlike in the traditional setup where presents sit underneath the tree, the trees sit amongst presents. The tree on the left seems to be significantly less healthy for whatever reason. Now attach an image. I'll attach a picture in case my description does not provide an adequate image on its own. <coughs> I have plenty more to say, but I don't want to waste... Let me take a sip here, I apologize. <clears throat> but I don't want to waste your time on this poorly written digression. Remember me back to VORW 104, where you talked about the fact that only seven people wrote in gives me confidence in the fact that you won't mind too much. I know it's a bit cliche to end on words of sentiment, but I will nonetheless. I, and many others, greatly appreciate what you do and look forward to continuing to do what you do for many years to come. Thank you. P.S. I entitled this email VORW Letter Number 1 because I plan on writing in every week from this point on. I hope you and the listeners of VORW enjoy that. Sincerely, John Wade Robertson. I'm looking at the picture here, and it's an interesting little setup. There's two trees. One on the left and one on the right, both of them decorated. And in between the trees is a selection of presents, boxes and bags. And it's all kind of in front of this in front of like this fireplace mantle. I think that's an interesting little setup. Uber memes inside. Hi, I'm a YouTuber and big fan was one of your Maybe what was this? Well, let's see. Let's see what this guy's all about. Let's check this out. Hmm? Well, what videos does this guy make if he wants to collab? Here's a cool meme, wow. Isn't that just great? Thanks. How's it going, review bro? Thank you for witnessing me. To answer your question, yes, I currently have a Christmas tree up in my home. Every year my family has had a Christmas tree up for the holidays, and we were thinking of putting up a real tree this year, but in the end we decided on using a fake tree. Maybe next year we'll use a real one. We use various decorations and lights to decorate it, and we adorn the top of the tree with a star. This year is actually the first year we decorated the outside of our house with lights as well. We've been at this house for about 14 years now. I've been looking to improve my style and start dressing nicer. Like yourself, I'd like to know what do you think about brown suits. I hope you have a great Christmas holiday season and look forward to what you bring this new year. Thank you for writing. It depends, brown suits. Personally, I think brown suits with a pattern are best. Okay. Personally, what I think brown suit would look the best is either a, is a brown suit with a pattern, mostly like a checkered pattern. It could be broad checkered or very thin. But I think a brown suit with some sort of checkered pattern, perhaps, would look best. Maybe even a pinstripe, preferably double-breasted with wide lapels. And I think that's the best type of brown suit. Because some of those three-button brown, brown suits, especially solid, just look horrible, especially the shades of brown. I saw this one suit the other day that was in this orangish-brown color, and it just looked so horrible. So, you know, I think it looks best with a, uh, you know, I think it looks best with a pattern and double-breasted. Merry Christmas, Tide Review Bra. I send you my usual greetings and salutations. 
I must say, since I last wrote in, everything has been extremely hectic. The holidays are a joyful time, however, mixed into the hustle and bustle of life, it can all get overwhelming. Luckily, most of the hustle, for me, has subsided in these couple of days before Christmas. He writes, as a devout Catholic, when everything gets hectic around Christmas, I always try to slow down and remember that this holiday is about Christ most of all. I completely agree about Christmas trees. They are beautiful and evoke the holiday season. I also applaud you for saying you will call it a Christmas tree, which traditionally it is. I understand not everyone celebrates Christmas, but I always wish people a Merry Christmas rather than Happy Holidays. To answer this week's question, sadly I do not have any room for a traditional Christmas tree. However, I have a very small tinsel Christmas tree which needs no decorating, and I have strung lights around my electric fireplace and around some windows of my apartment. When I was living with my parents during my childhood, we have a huge artificial tree that we have put together and decorate. Through late high school and most of college, I convinced them to just get a real live Christmas tree, and from then on, they went with that. And even though I moved out, they still have a real one. Our Christmas tree decorations consist of a ton of Disney World and Disney-related decorations. Every time we visit Disney, we get some kind of ornament and have the artist at the da Disney Christmas store in downtown Disney, aka Disney Springs it is called now, and draw the year we visited on that ornament. We've been there quite a lot, so we have many of these. We also add color lights and garland. Currently around my electric fireplace, I've got some of those old-fashioned C9 color lights and stockings. As a huge Star Wars fan, one of the stockings has a large Stormtrooper helmet on it. And around the windows, I hung C9 red and white lights. I prefer the C9S because I love the old-fashioned feeling they evoke, and there's something about the larger bulbs that scream Christmas Tide. There really is not much to write other than to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Your channel gives me a nice avenue of relaxation when my mind gets too tired or overwhelmed, and I thank you for that. Review bra, by the way, per your request of me in the last few RW I wrote into, I have included to this fan mail Thanks to various classical and operatic pieces, which I suggest you to listen to, I hope you'll enjoy them all. Until next time, Merry Christmas Tide, your friend, Rob, in New York. Thank you very much for writing, Rob. And I did see your very fine selection of classical music. Everything from the very traditional era to the romantic era and everything in between. And I thank you very much for that fine selection. And I do see you took a good amount of time on that. And I think that's very nice. I think that's nice that you guys, you know, you were able to convince them to use a real live Christmas tree as well. Okay, and on to the next letter here. Hey, the report of the week. Have you seen the new Star Wars movie? And if so, what do you think? What did you think of it? Did you like it? What was the best thing about it? And what did you hate in it? Merry Christmas from Wojak. Well, I did not see the new Star Wars movie, so I cannot give you any sort of opinion from it. However, as I did say earlier, I have heard first-hand accounts that the new Star Wars movie was a pretty fine one. And as you heard me mention earlier about the, the more recent Star Wars movies from the early 2000s, I know a lot of them were just really trying to very combat and action focused, and I think a lot of them were just trying to show off the CG technology. You know, all these fancy lightsaber battles and everything, and very, you know, very limited plot focus, if you will. But I have heard from, from first-hand accounts that this, this movie was good, but I, have, I myself have not seen it. On to the next. I ran across your channel today and have a bit of unsolicited advice. Cut your videos into shorter bits, focus on highlighting your mannerisms, and of course, your opinion on product slash service. You should have much more subscribers than you currently do because the talent is there. And if you do that, that'll give you more subs. Well, thank you for your advice, but I prefer to be myself and not change anything else. Therefore, thank you for the advice again, but that is all. Okay. And this is a request which perhaps maybe I'll tend to later. Let's mark that. And that's all we've got here in the Rep Week Interview 1 address. Now let's check out the official VORW info email address. That's the official VORW email address, but Rep Week Interview 1 is the channel address, but both email addresses go to the same place. They'll both be seen by me. Again, if you would like to write to us, our question for this program simply, again, as I mentioned, is very open-ended, so feel free to answer us however you interpret it. Simply, 
Do you think 20, 2015 was a good year or a bad year? Or you could be neutral about it too. And you can say it however you want to. If you want to talk about your life, that's fine. If you want to talk about how you think the world was, that's fine. If you don't want to talk about anything at all, that's fine by me too. Continuing onward here, let's go to the VORW info email address. VORW info at gmail.com Usually Rep Week Interview 1 gets the majority of the traffic. And if you're not sure how to spell that, you can always find it on the channel itself. Continuing onward. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. Okay, okay, let's find this. Here we go. And here we go. Hey, review bra. To answer your question, this is an old message, by the way. To answer your question, I enjoy music from pretty much every decade until the 60s until now. My favorite decades would be the 80s and 90s, probably. I'm big into metal, and those decades produced a lot of my favorite releases. The 80s produced many great heavy metal, thrash, metal, and death metal albums, and the 90s produced many great black metal and Swedish death metal albums. I also like some of the pop and rock from the 80s and 90s. Cheesy 80s pop is a guilty pleasure of mine. However, there's both great music and bad music from every decade. How about you, my friend, from Josh? I myself am always a big fan of 90s music. I do, I especially like rock, alternative, punk, and even some pop from the 90s. That's my biggest genre, and after that is probably the early to mid 2000s. And following that, anything is game, really. Anything is really game, you know. I'd have to, to say, you know, there's some good songs in every decade. A lot of good classic songs from the 60s, some good classic rock from the 70s, some good 80s pop, some good 50s rock and roll, some 40s big band, 30s jazz, classical music, probably even a Gregorian chant or two that I'd find appealing. You never know. I figure there's something good from every decade as long as you just look, look enough. This one is submitted to both email addresses, so that's done. And right here, let's see what else we got. And finally, closing everything off. Hey, review bro, I've been loving these constant uploads recently. Keep it up. Since I didn't ask, answer the question about Legos, I'll answer it now. I, didn't, I don't buy Legos often, but when I do, I thoroughly enjoy them. There are a few things in this world that rival the experience of building and completing a Lego set, in my opinion. As for Christmas trees, our family does not have one up, and we don't plan on having one up, as we don't really celebrate Christmas. We might go for a dinner to buy each other a gift, but that's as far as our Christmas traditions go. Anyways, I wanted to ask you about college. I remember you said in a previous VRW you were planning to go to college in broadcasting. Are you still planning that? If so, keep up. If so, good luck and keep up the good work. Well, thank you for writing. And, uh, who knows. That's all we have for this program, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just finally once more check the YouTube inbox and uh, see if there's any stragglers that came in. I doubt it. And there are none. So that's all we have for today. Remember again that our question was about 2015. Simply put, was 2015 a good year? Yes or no? You could even say it was a mediocre year. It was an okay year. I don't really have any opinions on how 2015 was. And answer it however you'd like. I know it can be a bit personal for some, <clears throat> so answer it however you'd like, if you even want to answer it at all. If you'd like to write in, remember writing it is a quintessential portion of this program. Simply send us a email, repweekinterview1 at gmail.com or vorwinfo at gmail.com. That's R-E-P-W-E-K-I-N-T-R-V-I-E-W-1, the number one, no spaces there, at gmail.com or vorwinfo, that's vorwinfo at gmail.com. Or send us an email or a letter via YouTube. YouTube.com slash user slash report of the week. Click on the About tab. Send message and send that message away. Well, thank you again for listening, ladies and gentlemen. We hope to get this up for you very shortly. And again, fan art is very much appreciated. Well, that wraps up today's program, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that this is the pre-New Year's program. And that on New Year's, we'll get an additional program for VORW that will consist of a year and review perhaps with some added bonuses. Thank you again for listening. Hope you've had a great Christmas season, and I wish you all the best in whatever is left of 2015. Thank you for listening. This is VORW, the voice of Report of the Week, 
And that's all we have for you. This is the voice of the Report of the Week, signing off.